This next challenge is called count odd numbers below n. Given a number n, return the number of positive odd numbers below n. Easy. And they gave a couple examples. Consider the input 7. That should return 3 because if you start counting from 1, remember it said positive, so everything above 0, uh, you get 1, 3, and 5. Because it said below n, you don't include the 7. And that's why it returns 3 and not 4. So consider another input, 15. You should get 7. And feel free to count those out from 1 to 13. It doesn't include the input again. So go ahead and come on over. You're definitely well equipped to solve this problem. And I will do that now. I assume you're ready. And so there's a very, very simple solution that I'm going to use. Uh, you could simply go return n over 2, right? We know that the numbers, as you count integers from 1, they alternate between even and odd values. Half of them are even and half of them are odd. And you can kind of consider some examples to make this uh, clear why this works. So if we use the input 7, right, if we perform integer division on 7 divided by 2, we know that divides out to 3 and a half, but because it's an integer, it sort of throws away or truncates that uh, decimal portion of the number, and it just leaves you with the 3. And so that's a nice thing with odd numbers. If the input's even, then it will divide out evenly. So consider an input like 8. 8 divided by 2 is 4. And if you wrote out the numbers from 1 to 8, or even just the odd numbers as they wrote out, you would see that it's the 1, 3, 5, 7. So, yeah, that should be good enough. So yeah, I'll end up submitting that. What you may have done, you may have overthought it and or just wanted to use some link methods. You could have gone, let's bring that in. And it's okay to think this way. It just isn't the best solution for this problem. It causes a lot of extra work. So we saw range, but um, we could take the input uh, int input I'll call it convert to int 32 this will get it in integer form from an unsigned long that's what u means unsigned long long is a type that holds a larger set of values than int so if int were 32 bits, maybe long could be 64 bits. You'd have to check your system to be sure. And then when you see these prefixed with the U, it means unsigned, meaning that they don't uh, support negative values. So you get a, you can do higher positive numbers because you're not including any of those negative values in your, in your range. So here I just turn it into an int that works with this range function. You could say one to input, you know, and that will generate the integers one, two, three, four, five, six, up to input. Because in their instructions they said below input or below n, you could go minus one here, and then you could, maybe you thought to do something to filter. Remember the link method where it's kind of like a filter, and we, you can give it a predicate, and so you could say. We already learned how to check for even and odd behavior. If modulo 2 is equal to 1, it's, you're dealing with an odd number. If num modulo 2 is equal to 0, then you know you have an even. So this basically filters and keeps the, the odd values. And then you could tell it to count. But then it's weird because you have to return a u long here instead of an integer. So you got to sort of convert that back. Um, return convert 
and we could go to u int 64, something like this could work. Let's try it. But yeah, you can see you're kind of building that range of numbers right up to the value uh, and then filtering out the evens, you're keeping the odds, and then you're just counting the size of that collection that's made and then converting that integer count to a u-long type. So that appears to work. Overflow, too small. Well, overflow exception to it. So they probably had some numbers that were too big to be converted to an integer. Let's see. We could go console right line n equals to n just to get an idea of what kind of input we're dealing with. Oh yeah, that's a big number, look at that. That's a very big number. It's like two trillion or something like that. So yeah, that's not gonna fit in a regular integer. Um, I don't care enough to try to make this approach work. It's not, uh, the way to go with this problem anyway but in case you were you may have thought to go about it like that so um, I'm just going to return the n over 2 but yeah you could have done something with for loops too this is just kind of a a simple way See, so yeah, I'll go ahead and fire this one off, the easy solution. I imagine there'll be a lot of those. Yep, n over two, very popular. Very, very popular. Oh, <laughs> That's fun. <laughs> okay. But yeah, there you have it. Uh, pretty easy. Sometimes you just gotta make sure you're not overthinking it and doing more work than you have to do. Thanks for watching.